Our challenge this week is to go out and try and get where Florida is and take what they've had the past three years. It's a great rivalry. It's just such a big game, not just for this one game, but for later on down the road. Cabo, touchdown! He's gone! Brady, touchdown, Florida! It's the SEC on ESPN as you look in on a packed Neyland Stadium in Knoxville, Tennessee. And you can hear the roar. Every ticket sold here for the first time in four years. Why? Because the Volunteers think they're back. And here they come. The matchup. Number 18, Florida, against number 23, Tennessee. Welcome to Knoxville, everybody. Brad Nessler along with Todd Blackledge. Partner, I just said number 18 <laughs> against number 23. First time in this series five years ago today was the last time both teams were ranked when they played. That special feeling, that buzz, yeah. it's back. Well, that buzz and energy around Knoxville and in the stadium is definitely back. I don't know if the two teams are quite back yet. You know, when these teams used to play, the winner found themselves in the driver's seat of the SEC East. I don't know if the winner tonight is in the driver's seat, but it's like the little kid that's in the back seat, took his seatbelt off, got his head popped up in the front seat. He's looking to get up in that front seat. We're going to learn about these two teams tonight. They're both better than they were a year ago, and I think the winner takes a big step. Both coaches told us the exact same thing in meeting with them yesterday. We'll tell you about 9.30 tonight how good we are. The series history. Florida has the edge 22 to 19. They've won seven straight though and it can't be a rivalry unless somebody kicks in there and starts to win. That's what Tennessee is looking for. And look at the total points all time as these two teams get together for the 42nd time. And here come the Florida Gators. As the Gators draw some booze there's always tendencies in this series as there are all around college football. Holly, Ryle, Holly Rose got one for us right now. How? Well Brad how about this one in the last 22 times these two teams have me met the team that has rushed the ball better has won 20 of those times so that is of utmost importance tonight for Florida though their leading running back who leads the SEC in rushing Mike Gillisley is somewhat injured. He strained his groin in the game last week against Texas A&M. Now Will Muschamp told us that he's practiced every day this week but he shut him down about halfway through practice so he didn't strain it again. He is so important because he has accounted for 64 percent of the Gators rushing yards 80 percent of their touchdowns. I watched him all through pregame guys. He was able to push off do everything normally but he is wearing an extra tight pair of compression shorts under his uniform to give that groin a little extra support. All right Holly. Will Muschamp his second season as the head man in Gainesville they had 0 and 5 against ranked teams. You could almost say the same thing for Derek Dooley. So something has to give tonight. Derek in his third year. One game under 500. So both teams 2 and 0. Volunteers if they get to 3 and 0 win this game it'll be the first time since 2004 that they would start a season with a 3 and 0 record. Gators as I mentioned have won seven straight in the series. Tennessee thinks tonight is their night to turn that around. Gators to kick. Devron Young and Cordero Patterson are back deep. From Neyland Stadium. We're underway and it'll be Tennessee taking it at the 20. Tyler Bray and company coming out. This kid's grown a lot, not just mentally, but physically. Yeah. He's a big kid and he can really sling it. He told us that Wednesday weighed 222 pounds. So hardly the guy we saw yeah. a couple of years ago. 185 pounds when he arrived on campus from California. And uh, that strength has really helped improve his arm strength as well. Has great arm talent, can make all the throws, and he has played near flawlessly in the first two games for Tennessee. So the first snap will come from the 25 yard line. Rajon Neal 
will be with Tyler Bray in the Tennessee backfield. And he gets the first call. Neal cuts outside. He's got the corner. And a lot more. 20 yard pickup on the first snap. Josh Evans ran him out of bounds. So that lights the crowd up one more time. Last week, Tex Texas A&M hurt Florida's defense with quarterback draws. The first play of the game is a draw to Neal. He bounces it outside, shows the quickness, and gets on the edge of the Florida defense on the first play. So already at the 45-yard line. He's a guy that they need to get yardage from on the ground. Holly mentioned. 20 of the past 22, and they're off to a good start. This time he stopped for no gain. May have lost a yard. Sharif Floyd made the stop as we take a look at our impact players brought to you by Chick fil A. Well, two great receivers in Hunter and Patterson. And on the defensive side, Smoky Mountain, if you will. Daniel McCullers, all 200, uh, 377 pounds of him. Second down at 10. Bray loads and fires complete out near the 50 to Patterson. A pickup of five. You mentioned the two wide receivers. They're very different in their styles. Patterson, who just made that catch, is a physical receiver, has great speed, but a stronger receiver. On the other side, Justin Hunter, a taller receiver, a great jumper, a little bit leaner, great ball skills in the air. On a third down at five, Florida brings in their nickel defense. And Bray will be in the shotgun. Firing down the middle and incomplete. Looking for a flag and they don't get one. Trying to hit Neal out of the backfield. They really felt that the matchup that favored them, rather than going outside all the time, would be trying to get Neal, who was a receiver last year, out of the backfield matched up on linebackers. That time, John Bostic was in coverage, and Florida was able to get the stop. So Dar to punt. Deontay Saunders is back deep. And he awaits near the 10 yard line. So one very good play by Neal and Tennessee's got to give it up. Saunders has got to let this bounce and it'll go out of bounds at about the 10 yard line. So it'll be Florida's first chance now. And coming out with Jeff Driscoll, a sophomore at quarterback. Guy that uh, has performed pretty well in a 2 0 start, Todd. Yeah, he has. I mean, I think that Will Muschamp and Brent Pease, the offensive coordinator, have tried to protect him. They've tried to establish the run, not put too much on his plate. He played well on the road at AM last week, throwing the football, but he took a few too many sacks. Right. Eight sacks, six of them were the result of him holding the ball too much or not making a decision. That's where he's got to do a better job tonight against this Tennessee defense and he's going to hear it from the folks down there in that end zone already as they start at the 10 yard line and around loose ball Tennessee almost had it I think Florida got back on it and we've got a flag down unless it just fell out of the umpire's pocket but still they're trying to pull everybody off the pile that was a golden opportunity for Tennessee Right away, Florida trying to get a little trick play, take advantage of the aggressiveness of the Tennessee defense. A bad exchange, and it really wasn't a bad pitch. I just think the receiver Dunbar took his eyes off of the ball. It's a pretty good pitch by the back Jones. Dunbar takes his eyes off of it and is fortunate to get it back for Florida. That's even tougher for Driscoll and company. At the three-yard line, if he throws, it'll be from the end zone. He won't. And now a loss of a yard. And I think it's interesting. Holly reported on Mike Gillisley. The first two plays of the game for the Florida Gators, Matt Jones is in as the starting tailback, not Mike Gillisley. And now it's going to be third down and 17 from about the three. Not a good spot to be in if you're Jeff Driscoll. Right now you're thinking about just trying to move the ball out a few more yards so your punter has some room to kick it, and he's not putting his heels on the back of the end line. I would be very surprised if they have Jeff Driscoll throwing the football here. 
He stands in the checkered end zone. On third and 17. And now it's an empty backfield. He's going to have to throw. Or run himself. To the far sideline. He got it out across the five, but that's about it. But that will help the punter a little bit. Florida defense now coordinated by Sal Sinceri, who was the linebacker coach for Nick Saban in Alabama the last three years. Won a couple national championships along the way. Very aggressive style. The team pinned down in their area makes it easier to, to call defenses like that. See if Kyle Christie gets any pressure from the volunteers. Devin Young waits at midfield. Snap is high. Christie handled it though, and they didn't have the rush on. Nice punt. A beautiful punt. Fair catch all the way back at the 38 yard line. Boy, that helped the cause. Nice kick by Christie. No score early. 11 25, first quarter in Knoxville. Scoreless here, first quarter, 11 25 remaining. One of the things that Tennessee has done a great job of in the first two ball games is. Productivity on first down. They've averaged over 10 yards of play. A lot of that has been on play action passes. They've got a lot of their big chunk pass yardage plays off of first down play action. They ran the first first down of the game for a first down. Wouldn't be surprised to see a throw here. And here's Neal. Find some room again. Off left tackle. He goes out for seven. Last year in this ball game. Tyler Bray threw for 288 yards and three touchdowns. But as a team, Tennessee only ran for minus nine yards. Yeah. I mean, you can't have that kind of balance in the SEC against quality defenses and hope to be in a position to win very often. Minus nine last year and even worse the year before. Second down, short. And they'll keep it on the ground. And Ray John's got a first down. Picked up four more to the 41. When I watch this Tennessee offensive line on tape, I really like what I see. It's a group that has played a lot of ball together, 106 career starts. They're very good at pass blocking, better than they are at run blocking, but they're athletic enough and strong enough up there to become a better run blocking team. You and I were at the Georgia Dome to watch them play NC State when we walked out near the offensive line. You and I looked at each other and said, that's an NFL line. Yeah. They're size wise anyway. So first down. Three wide outs for Tyler Bray. Florida brings an extra man. He's going to let go over the middle. Patterson, the intended receiver, incompletes. And Deontay Saunders looks like he's shaken up a little bit in the secondary. Dan Quinn, defensive coordinator for Florida, anticipating pass on that first down. Decided to bring a little pressure. Brought John Bostic, his middle linebacker, was able to force the quick throw. There's a pistol set for the first time for Tennessee with Neal behind Bray. Neal's going to go down for a loss again. Sharif Floyd has made a couple of plays already. Twice he stopped the Tennessee running back for a loss. Think about Sharif Floyd. I mean, he's big enough to play over the nose or a defensive tackle at 6'3 and over 300, but he's quick enough to get into the backfield, to rush the passer or to get penetration plays like he did on that run. So they find themselves. The Volunteers in the third down and 12. Here they come. Bray got rid of it. It's intercepted. Picked off easily over the middle. McCray all the way down to the 35 yard line. Leandre McCray with the interception and a 25 yard return. Well, it was a zone blitz. So there was pressure coming to the left of the quarterback. But McCray is right here. He's going to fake rush and drop into the zone. Pressure will come this way. Tyler Bray thinks he has to get rid of it, but he doesn't see McCray, the defensive end, who dropped back into the middle of the field and is waiting for the interception. So Florida with the turnover and the return sets up shop offensively at the Volunteer 35. Gillisley is in at tailback now. Behind Joyner. Joyer, the fullback. And he gets straight, but he gets only a yard. And he had to work for that. The Florida tendency coming into this game, and Sal Sinceri was very aware of it, is when number 41 is in the game, Hunter Joyer, the fullback, they want to try to pound the football at you and run power football. 
Tennessee was right there ready to be stout against the run on that first down play. Joyer goes out, but Trey Burton comes in. And with Trey Burton, you're never quite sure where he's going to line up. In this case, it'll be a slot to the top of your screen. He does a little bit of everything. Yeah, Burton and Reed are two very flexible, versatile guys. Driscoll in an empty backfield. Watch to throw. Goes down the middle, and it's a strike complete to Jordan Reed. Yep. Trey Burton was the slot receiver on the right of the formation. Jordan Reed was the slot receiver on the left of the formation. And those two guys can line up in a lot of different places. Driscoll does a nice job of not panicking, stepping up in the pocket. See, last week he had a tendency to try to take off and get outside of AM's defense, and that was, is what led to a couple sacks. That time he felt pressure but didn't leave the pocket. Florida, five out of six in the red zone this year. Five touchdowns all on the ground. Burton's in now, Wildcat. And he will take off to the left after the motion went to the right, and he's going to cruise into the end zone. Touchdown, Florida. Nobody touched him. Well, they took advantage of the turnover and turned it in to a score. Only three plays to go those 35 yards. Derek Dooley is emotional on the sideline, to say the least. Surges in for the point after. Up and good. So at the midway points of the first quarter, scoreless no more. First, the interception by McCray. The return got him to the 35. Three plays later, Burton easily skates into the end zone. Seven nothing, Gators. 42nd meeting between these rivals. Florida leads. As I mentioned, eight of the last ten and seven straight. Total points almost exactly the same. Right now, Florida's just added to it with a touchdown of Burton, his 15th career rushing touchdown. We talked about how he does a little bit of everything, yeah. and he easily got to the end zone on that last play. Well, too easy. I mean, there was an obvious breakdown in the Tennessee defense that made it too easy for Trey Burton. Sturgis to kick. Devron Young and Cordero Patterson are back deep. Young lets it go and to bring it out to the 25. Marlon Lane the single setback now behind Tyler Bray as Tennessee works from its own 40 yard line. Looking over the sideline to get the call. And on play action he wants to let one go and he does deep ball for Hunter. Got it. Inside the 20. Well, you see the ball skills of Justin Hunter working on Roberson, who's six foot. Justin Hunter, six foot. Watch him go up in the air and adjust to the ball. Catch it at the high point over the smaller defender. Outstanding work by Justin Hunter. Tennessee in the red zone now at the 18 yard line. And it's Lane for about a yard. Marlon Lane, a sophomore on a Daytona Beach, Florida. One of the things that I think makes Tyler Bray one of the best quarterbacks in the country is his accuracy on throws down the field. I mean, look at that percentage, completion percentage, 76% on throws of 15 yards or more. Wow. And part of that is arm strength, but more of it is timing and touch. And he has great timing and touch on the deep ball. Plus, he's got a couple guys that can flat out. Yeah, absolutely. Hunter and Patterson. That time Hunter. And the run, second down and nine. This time he's going to throw a fade to the corner to Hunter. Almost one-handed it in a penalty marker in the end zone. Pass interference. Defense number five. Oh, and Will Muschamp is not buying it. They'll walk it off inside the 10. Here's another look. The reason I thought it was pretty good is because his eyes were back to the quarterback. Well, yeah, his hand did get up on, in, into the face mat. Yeah, both Not hands. only the jersey, but also into the helmet and the face. And I didn't think that happened, but it did on the replay that for was sure. That a combination. I think he got yep. it with both hands in the face. It's now at the two-yard line. First and goal, Tennessee. Trying to tie this thing up with three minutes remaining in the first quarter. 
Rajon Neal, the tailback. They're going to throw. Quick slant. Touchdown. Cordero Patterson. As Todd said, two pretty good ones to throw to. The long ball to one of them, the short slant to the other for the score. Hunter is the long body, Patterson is the big body, and you throw that slant of the end zone to the big body. Tie game at Neyland. Another look. Bray's seventh touchdown toss of the year, 7-7. Tennessee will kick off from the 20 yard line following the penalty. Michael Polardi strikes the ball and he comes down to DeBose at the 18. Veers right to the 25 30. Makes a man miss 35. Across the 40, a flag goes flying in. He's still on his feet and shoved out of bounds near the 48 yard line at midfield. First and 10 from the 31. Hines motions out of the backfield again. Driscoll all alone. Snap to Driscoll, looking to throw, fires a laser, caught by tight end Jordan Reed at the 35, and he gets about four yards on the pass completion. Gators have a second and six from their own 35 on the left hash. Mike Gillisley in the game. Hunter Joyer is the fullback out of an eye set. Here's the handoff to Gillisley, and Gillisley is hit and dropped by Daniel McCullers again. That 377 pound nose tackle made the play on Gillisley right up the middle. That's what McCullers. Does. They say McCullers plays in kind of a one yard box. He can go left, right, back, and forward about a yard. That's it. There are eight guys in that box. Eight guys. Tennessee is committed to stopping this run. One of them was totally unblocked, made the tackle. One minute to play, first quarter. Gators seven, Volunteers seven. The Gators have a third and seven from their own 34 yard line. Snap to Driscoll in the gun, looking, looking, fires the pass out to Burton, who makes the catch, but he's tackled at the 40-yard line on a great play by Brent Rower, the safety, who saved a first down. And the Gators are going to be about a yard short. Well, I get that play. Man coverage on Trey Burton, who was in the slot, pushed up the field, started inside, pivoted outside. Driscoll threw him a beautiful ball. Nice tackle by the Tennessee defender, just short of the first down. Nothing wrong with the call, just a great defensive play, actually. All right, Kyle Christie will hit it from the 30-yard line. Two punts today, he's averaged 52.5. This is his best snap, and his kick is away. Hits it very high. Debron Young again comes up, signals for a fair catch, in some traffic, makes the catch at the 24-yard line. So there's a punt of 36 yards that time. And Tennessee will start with... The ball going into the second quarter. It's been a thrilling first 15 minutes tonight on the banks of the Tennessee River here in Knoxville. And after the first quarter, our score, Florida 7, Tennessee 7 on the Gators IMG Sports Network. Just about set to start the second quarter in a tie football game. Before we do, check in with Holly. Well, thanks, Brad. Derek Dooley told us that last year they went to Gainesville in the exact same position, 2-0, feeling good about themselves. But when Justin King got hurt, or Justin Hunter got hurt on the third play of the game, the team went flat. They didn't do well with adversity. So how did they handle adversity today? Well, Tyler Bray throws his first interception of the year. He comes right over to the sideline. He's positive. He's back. He's intercept. He's talking to the guys, not letting anybody hang their head. They came right back out drove down the field and Derek Dooley said hey guys this is how we've got to play we've got to pick up the pace pick up the tempo we need to determine how quick we play against the Gators been eight years since Tennessee scored a touchdown in the first quarter yeah. against the Gators so they're off to a better start than they have been in a long time well, I think the question Derek Dooley is asking about his team what is the level of our maturity and I think Tyler Bray showed a lot so far in that first quarter. Here's the first run of the second quarter, and it's Neal who got the corner before he's bumped out of bounds by Purifoy. Holly was talking about Justin Hunter a year ago, September 17th, last year, fourth play of the game, trying to make a leaping catch, twisted in midair, landed awkwardly, and there went the ACL. And it's been a long time coming back. The boy, has he ever come back? Listed on most people's lists as a potential 
high first round draft choice in the NFL whenever he chooses to go pro. Snap a little bit low. Plenty of time for Tyler Brand. He fires it out, complete to Patterson. And again, Patterson using that body to shield himself. Picks up a seven yard gain and a first down. You know, we talked to John Bostick on the phone this week, their starting middle linebacker. And we asked him about these two receivers, and they are comparing them, the Florida defense, to SEC guys. I'll get to it in a second. Again, the offense looks to the sideline. Getting the calls in hand signal wise by the backup quarterbacks. And now Tyler Bray spreads the information. And they spread the field with three wide receivers, but keep it on the ground. Rajon Neal pops through out across the 40 to the 42. Those two wide outs in the USC are yeah. pretty good. Well, these two guys, Justin Hunter and Cordero Patterson. You know, Patterson, they compared to Julio Jones, the former Alabama receiver, bigger, stronger. Hunter was more like A.J. Green. Florida thought about a blitz off the corner. They're just going to keep it on the ground again, and Neal loses yardage one more time. And Dante Fowler made the stop. See, it's all about numbers in terms of when you run and when you throw. And what Tennessee is saying is if there's two safeties, that means the numbers favor us to run the football. But if you can't run with two deep safeties, you're going to have a long night trying to run the football. You want to force them to drop another safety down, then you have man coverage to throw. Third and 11. Throw is on the money and a first down catch by the tight end, Rivera. That had to be right where it was yeah. to keep it away from the defense. Perfect throw. I think they got Matt Elam for pass interference or holding also the safety who was in coverage. Elam at 5'10", guarding Michael Rivera, 6'3", tight end across the field. And a beautiful catch going to the ground by Rivera. Holding, holding. number 22 of the defense. On penalties decline. Play results in the first half. That's exactly what Todd said. Rivera is a fifth year senior who is playing his best ball and it's it's like the light just finally went on for him. He's going to be the tight end crossing right across the face of the quarterback. He lost some weight. He had a great offseason got himself in the best shape that he's been in. And he's uh, he's really played well here to start the year. Elam in fact had an interception in the final two minutes last year that preserved the Florida win. Bray deep on the sideline and threw it into the Florida bench. Intended for Justin Hunter. One of the challenges for this Tennessee passing game in this game is Florida is going to play more bump and run coverage than these receivers have seen all season. And they respect both Hunter and Patterson, no question, but that's Florida's style. They want to pressure the quarterback and get up and disrupt the timing by getting their hands on receivers. Ray on second and 10. Oh, I don't know. That one got away from him. It was intended for Patterson, but way over his head. Yeah, and Florida was lucky because there was some real miscommunication in the Florida defense. The corner, Purifoy, was trying to talk to the linebacker, Morrison, about where he was supposed to be, and they were out of position, but it was just an errant throw by Tyler Bray. I mean, way off the mark. Do you yeah. just have that happen once in a while? I Sometimes guess, huh? it just goes that way. Third time that Tennessee's been a, in a third and ten or longer here in the first half. See if they can convert this one. They'll bring an extra man. Florida with a rush. Bray pump fakes and goes down. And that's a perfect throw to Rivera again. And Elam is saying that he pushed off that time. No flag. Well, there was contact. Here's Rivera. He's just going to run a little in route. He's going to get across the face of the receiver and a beautiful throw. And Elam never looked back for the ball. And Tyler Bray threw it right past his ear for the completion. And now, as the plays change for Tennessee, Florida likewise changes their defensive look. Chess match going on here. They fake the end around, and Neal almost popped into the secondary. Matt Elam dragged him down by one leg. Well, this is a heavy formation that Tennessee uses. This guy right here, who's lined up as a tight end, is actually a tackle. That's Alex Bullard. He wears number 88, but he's an extra offensive lineman. And they put him in to give them extra bulk up there to push the pile. 
We mentioned it earlier. Normally wearing a number in the 70s, but he's got that 80 now as an extra tight end. All 89 today. 89, right? <laughs> all 300 pounds of it. Now third down and three. Big play for the Florida defense here. Bray fires complete. Hunter puts on a move at the eight and got to the five. It's first and goal. For some reason, Marcus Roberson left Justin Hunter. I think he anticipated Hunter was going to run a slant. Watch Roberson break inside, and Hunter just stayed right out there and gave his quarterback a target. Roberson guessed on the route. He guessed wrong, and Tyler Bray got the conversion for the first down. First and goal, Tennessee. Just outside the five-yard line. Play fake, Bray to the end zone touchdown Rivera Tyler Bray's dad looking on his son's thrown two touchdown passes in the first half and Tennessee's got the lead Fourteen seven volunteers. Tyler Bray's eighth touchdown pass of this young season has put his team in front on a first and goal. They went for the score and Derek Dooley says at a baby. Michael Polardi has it teed up for Tennessee. And his left leg strikes the ball hits it high and end over end and DeBose four yards out is coming out to the 10 to the 15 and hit and dropped at around the 19 yard line and so Tennessee is fired up they clearly now have momentum in the game and consider this Tennessee has run 34 plays to the Gators 13 first down for the Gators and they've got two timeouts to work with with 319 left in the second quarter empty backfield now Gillisley comes out as a wide out to the right they're going to throw the ball in that direction and O'Marius Hines this is a really nice job of Driscoll not panicking, recognizing that the pressure was coming and getting rid of the football. Watch his eyes are going to work to the left as this play starts. He sees the pressure coming, immediately goes back to the right and finds his outlet receiver. It was a screen set up, but he had to throw it sooner than he coming wanted to. Field, huh. Well, he did everything right except throw the ball high enough. I guess. <laughs> Incomplete pass. Well, frankly, I didn't see it being that way, but uh, that's a good yep, call. Yep. This stadium's so big, we are only about a quarter mile away from the line <laughs> of scrimmage, so we miss that one. Second and ten at the 17. Dresco. Fires incomplete. First down. Out to Dunbar. And Dunbar still backpedaling out to the 37 yard line. Pickup of 20. Both teams a little feisty here at the end of every play here in the second quarter. It's a big completion for Driscoll. It gets some good field position. Opens up the playbook a little bit more for Brent Pease. Florida would love to get a score here at the very least three they're going to get the ball to start the third quarter so they want some momentum to take into the locker room points of some kind. Demarius Hines and Joyer and now Hines splits out as a receiver. Driscoll under center. Scrambles to his right. He's going to keep this one all the way. He's looking for a block and he got one and he got a first down and he got a bunch more all the way to the 35 yard line. Great run by the Florida quarterback. He has not been in a hurry to leave the pocket tonight. He learned from last week, but this time he makes a good decision because he gets outside the edge of the defense. He directs the block from Joyer, and then instead of running out of bounds, he says, look, I know I can get 15 more yards, and he makes a great decision at the end of the run as well. And he got 28 in all at a first down at the 35. So the Gators offense has got something working here with just over two minutes remaining in the half. 
They've got a bunch formation on the left of Driscoll. Gillis leads the tailback. They fake it to him. The end around is coming this way. Patton, and he's got another first down. Solomon Patton on the end around picks up 14. Two plays in a row. The Tennessee defense did not do a good job of setting the edge of their defense. One was on the run by Driscoll, this time on the reverse. Watch everything cave in. And Patton is able to get outside the defense. And now, as you said, they want at least three, but they're definitely thinking touchdown now at the 21 yard line. Dunbar and Pittman, the two wideouts to the left. Trips to the top of your screen. Briscoe's looking that way. Might not get a chance to throw. Running for his life. Throws on the run, and he threw a strike to Solomon Patton for a first down. That was a beautiful play. A.J. Johnson and Kurt Majit are both going to get pressure and flush him from the pocket. Majit is the first guy to make him go, and Johnson is not able to close the gap. And Driscoll keeps his poise and his eyes downfield and makes a tremendous throw on the move. Pick up on first and 15 of 17, and now it's first and goal. Sacked eight times last week. As Todd said, six of them, the coaches said, were his fault. Hasn't been sacked tonight. And just came up with a beautiful play to get the Gators in scoring range at the nine. Gillisley to the corner. The cutback, and now the power to the one. Tough run. Down to the one-yard line. Little counter power this time. The fullback, when Joyer's in, they like to run behind him. Watch him lead the way on the counter. They pull the guard and they get the fullback out there to secure the edge. And Gillisley does a nice job of moving sideways and getting towards the goal line. Second down and goal at the one. Joyer still in there. The fullback in the eye. Gillisley puts his head down, plows his way inside the one, but not to the goal line. And we're under a minute. Under a minute, Florida has two timeouts. You want to get this score. And you don't want to leave Tennessee any time to do anything offensively. If they don't get it in on this play, they have to call a timeout. Still at the one yard line. Little, Third and goal. Little surprise they're taking so much time in the huddle there, though, as we're now under 30 seconds. Burton was in the backfield and now comes out on a wing to the right. Joyer. They'll run behind him again. Gellisley stopped. Loss of yardage. Lathers is there. Bohannon is there. Big time stop by the senior linebacker. They pulled the guard, Jalapio, but he didn't get his piece of the linebacker. Lathers slipped right inside of him and made the big hit right in the hole. Jalapio was pulling to block Lathers and didn't get a piece of it. Caleb Sturgis, the SEC Special Teams Player of the Week, set up for what should be a chip shot, 20-yard field goal, to cut the lead to four. And it's up, and it's good, and it's the final play of the second quarter. Boy, big stop, though, by Tennessee to prevent Florida from evening it at 14 at halftime. Good football game going on, folks, here in Knoxville. Halftime. Tennessee 14, Florida 10. The SEC on ESPN and a good one in a battle between Florida and Tennessee. Number 23 volunteers leading by four as we head into the third quarter. Welcome back to Neyland Stadium, everybody. Brad Nestler with Todd Blackledge. Both teams had two trips into the red zone. They both paid off, but it's going to be interesting to see yeah. that stop by Herman Lathers down there that forced a field goal before halftime, if that could be the difference. Well, it could be, but, I mean, if you're Will Muschamp, you've got to be happy with the way your quarterback, Jeff Driscoll, has played for the second week in a row on the road in a hostile environment. He's taking care of the football. And unlike last week when he had five sacks at halftime, he's had zero sacks tonight. He's their leading rusher. He's been efficient passing the ball. And uh, they'll get the ball here to start the third quarter as well. So he's snapping that chin strap to get ready to come back out. Following the kick. And we're underway in the third. DeBose from two yards deep. 
And DeBose pops it out across the 20 to the 23 as we check in with Holly. Checking with the Gators coach at the half, Will Muschiam. They have been a second half team, and he was very confident coming out of the locker room. He said, we've been able to move the ball on these guys. Just an update on that rushing stat. They're up 20 yards more rushing than UT. The winner of this game, 20 of the last 22 times, has rushed for more yards as a reminder. But he said they're giving up too many rushing yards. He said, we have got to calm down. We've got to make some adjustments. We're not doing a good job in the running game, stopping their run. He really wants his guys to calm down and get off the field on third down. Here on first down, Florida from the 24 yard line. They're going to hand it off. Nope, Driscoll keeps it. He rides it in the gut of Hines and then keeps it himself. And picked up nine, almost 10. Again, the versatility of three guys on this Florida offense Omarius Hines, who was the guy who he faked it to that time, Trey Burton. And Jordan Reed, they can line up in so many different places and they get in that empty backfield and you don't know where those three guys are. And uh, that creates confusion by changing the formations and where those guys line up. A lot of things you can do on or with those aforementioned trio of players. This time just a straight handoff to Gillisley who really hasn't gotten much going tonight. He does here though. And gets out for seven yards. Let's take a look. Finding success brought to you by Expedia. Well, Jeff Driscoll in that first half did a nice job of staying in the pocket and going through his progressions. One read, two reads, all the way back to his third receiver. Last week, he was a little quick to leave the pocket and try to make a play by running. This week, against Tennessee in the first half, did a better job. 10 of the defense, 15-yard penalty of the run, automatic first down. Uh, personal foul on Marsalis Teague. Well, the penalties crop up right here in the third quarter, as they were for both teams in the first half. See at the end of the play. Yeah, always get the second guy. Always, yeah. always the second guy. It's always the second guy, especially when it happens on the Florida sideline. Right. So great field position here for Florida already. The opening drive of the third quarter. Mac Brown is in a tailback. Trey Burton is there with him. They fake the end around. Driscoll loads and goes down the sideline. Burton's got it. Good looking pass on that wheel right down the sideline at a pickup of 32. Well, again, the formation's changing. He's in the backfield as the fullback this time. He runs the wheel out, route out of the backfield, and a beautiful throw by Driscoll down the sideline. This kid's confidence has got to be growing by the Absolutely. throw, isn't it? Well, he, you can see it in his body language. The way that he's staying in the pocket, the poise he's showing in the pocket tonight, even compared to last week, is pretty dramatic to me. First and 10 at the 11 yard line. Gillisley back as the tailback, and they'll toss it to him. He's going to come straight ahead and runs into an orange wall there at the line of scrimmage. So as they unpile, it's going to be second down and 10. Somebody lost their lid, and that'll cost them a play. Big Daniel McMullers can fill that inside. Second down and nine. They can get a first down inside the two. Empty backfield. Briscoe flushed out of the pocket, looking to throw. Now he'll tuck it, get what he can, and he got blasted out of bounds. By A.J. Johnson took a cameraman and almost a cheerleader with him over there on the sideline. I know Driscoll's a big dude. This is a good decision. He was looking for Burton in the end zone. It wasn't there, and he made a quick decision to get what he could get. And very close to A.J. Johnson getting called for a penalty. Yeah. I thought Driscoll was out of bounds when he was hit. I think he was, Todd. And he launched at him. I I'm really surprised that that one didn't draw a flag. The third down at seven. Again, the two yard lines, the magic line, the goal line is what Florida's looking for here. Driscoll, quick drop, throws incomplete. Intended for Solomon Patton. And 
Jacquez Smith put the pressure on Driscoll. Well, Sal Sinceri dialed up some pressure that time. He was bringing as many people as he could. Man-to-man -man coverage in the back end of the defense, and they got to Driscoll and forced a bad throw. So for the second time inside the 10-yard line, the end of the first quarter, a second quarter, and the beginning of the third, Tennessee holds with that pressure by Smith forcing a field goal. Caleb Sturgis made that 20-yarder on the last snap of the second quarter. He'll try a 25-yarder here to try to make it a one-point game, and he does. So the opening drive of the third quarter for the Gators, successful. But again, they were looking for a touchdown and had to settle for three. Balls by one. Florida, 68 yards on their opening drive to start the third quarter in seven plays, but they had to settle for the 25-yard field goal and to cut the lead to one. Devin Young waiting back at the goal line with Cordero Patterson. Both dangerous guys. If you can give them a little crease, Caleb Sturgis will hope not to. He'll try to blast it out of the end zone. In this case, five yards in, Patterson decides to bring it out. And he's not going to get to the 20-yard line. A little bit of hesitation back there. Gator defense was eighth in the country nationally a year ago. Here's a draw play to Neal. Broke a couple tackles. Pretty good run when it looked like he could have been stopped behind the line. He got four. The other thing that Derek Dooley told Holly going off to halftime, we've got to get more explosive plays. We count those as runs over 12 yards, passes over 20 yards. They only had three in the first half. Right. That's, that's way down for how they've been playing the first two games of the season. Dan Quinn, the Gator defensive coordinator. Of course, Will Muschamp, former defensive coordinator, defensive-minded guy. Pistol set here. They fake the draw, and Bray goes deep down the middle. What a catch by Rodgers. Out to midfield. Zach Rodgers, big play. There's an explosive play, yep. 27 yards. Zach Rodgers has great speed. He's going to come right into the middle of the screen. And the safety, Josh Evans, is going to go for the ball and misses the tackle. I mean, at the very least, he could have collided when the ball got there. Now they keep it on the ground and kneel. And he works his way for five more. Omar Hunter made the stop. Zach Rogers had a big 72 yard touchdown in that season opener at the Georgia Dome against North Carolina State that you saw on ESPN 2. And as Todd said, he's got big time speed. He's in the slot on the right hand side. And Bray goes over to Justin Hunter, who had a knee down. He had to go low to make the catch, so it's dead right there. But a pickup of nine and the move the sticks. Again, enough of a run threat to make the Florida defense play on us. They can't just pin their ears back and go after Tyler Bray. Tyler Bray in the gun. Throws to the sideline. Oh. Back shoulder throw to Patterson. First down. <laughs> Made that look kind of easy, didn't oh, it? Oh, that was beautiful. And he read the safety movement and knew he had single covering. At the last minute, Florida's trying to disguise, and they move this safety down. That means he knows, Tyler Bray knows he has single coverage, and he goes to work with the back shoulder throw to Patterson, impossible to defend. Now Tennessee's got it first and goal. And they've been down in the red zone. They've made it pay. Two touchdowns, looking for more here. Rajon Neal, quick move to the outside, and then puts his helmet down and gets a tough couple. Well, right now, Florida's defense hoping they can duplicate a goal line stand that Tennessee put up right at the end of the first half and force a field goal attempt. And Omar Hunter in on the stop. Second and goal at the one. Bray will try to do it himself. All 6-6 six, six of him, but a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage. And Tyler Bray tried to do this in the opening game against North Carolina State with a no-huddle, hurry-up quarterback sneak. And, he and tried to ball. reach the ball over the line and got stripped and fumbled right at the one yard line. There's no foul for illegal formation. The formation was legal. All right, so they picked that one up. And they put the ball back down inside the one. Here comes the heavy artillery. <laughs> Bullard comes back in there as an extra tight end. Bartholomew is in there as well, the fullback spot. 
And they got A.J. Johnson in that Wildcat set. He got a first down on this drive earlier. So the linebacker getting ready to take a snap. Bottles it a little bit and then just walks into the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. linebacker turned running back the captain of the defense out of Gainesville Georgia takes it in from a yard up the upright is hit and now it will not be an eight-point game but rather seven this extra point that could be costly AJ Johnson a little bobble of the ball and takes it in from a yard out Tennessee back in front but by seven not eight Third straight game, Tennessee scored a touchdown on the opening drive for the third quarter. They lead by seven. And here's Pilardi, who's been kicking off tonight, but not kicking extra points. This one's returnable from the two-yard line. Andre DeBose reverses field. Dances across the 25 out to the 28-yard line as we check in with Holly. Well, Tennessee place kicker Derek Brodus is getting the first start of his career tonight. Guys, consider this. Last year, he was about the third-string guy. Well, before the Middle Tennessee State game in November, both kickers went down in pregame with groin injuries. They had no kicker for the game. So Derek Dooley sent the police to his house. He was asleep. A police escort back to the stadium. He made it in time to kick, and he did a good job. So he's been on the team since then. He's been kicking. Because of the inconsistency of Polardi, Brodus got his shot tonight. But, guys, a missed extra point, as you said. That won't keep the drop. Yeah, maybe not. Trey Burton again in the lineup for the Gators. And Burton takes off, and he's off to the races. Down the sideline, he broke a tackle. He might go. Burton, what a run. Touchdown. 80 yards for Trey Burton. What a play by Burton. What a block by James Wilson, number 66. Watch big number 66 get out in front of this play. The guard smashes the defensive end. The fullback gets through on Johnson, and then Burton shows the speed. He turned the corner on the defense to the left on his first touchdown, turned it on the right to the second touchdown. And a great stiff arm to Marcellus Teague's chest. That gave him the sideline of the opening to go 80 yards, a career long run. Sturgis point after is good. We said he could do a little bit of everything. Little did we know we could run that fast, 80 yards to tie this game. Our college football prime time presented by Hampton Hotels. A thriller going here, 2020. Trey Burton saying, Give me a little oxygen. That 80 yards in 12 seconds seemed like it took a lot longer than that. What a play, though. Two times we've seen Trey Burton get to the edge on this defense, and both times he's turned it into touchdowns. You know, about 10 minutes ago we said, how big was that extra point that hit the upright? Yeah. Tennessee still had the lead if they wouldn't have missed that. Sturgis to kick off. Six yards deep. Patterson will take a knee. Rivera, the tight ends in the slot. There's the slant, but it's Hunter, and he's got it. 15 yards, first down. He had to wait a little bit. Good protection by those guys up front. It wasn't there when he tried to throw on timing, but watch him as he stays in the pocket. Good protection. He's able to reload and find Hunter for the first down. Perfect throw, first down at the 40. 240 remaining in the third quarter. Tie game in Neyland Stadium. High backfield behind Bray now. They'll keep it on the ground. Dejan Neal might have gotten three out of the play. Kind of an interesting deal. James Stone, the center for Tennessee, the big 300 pounder out of Nashville, Tennessee. In shotgun snaps, he's left handed. He's a natural left hander. Right. 
So he snaps the ball left handed to Tyler in the shotgun and when he's under center he snaps it to him right handed. Well he was taught to, to snap under center right hand because as a quarterback it's more natural to receive a snap from a right hander than it is the left hander. So he had to kind of relearn and that's probably not the easiest thing in the world to do. Ambidextrous center. There he is with the right hand. That means Tyler Bray is under his backside. And oh, he wanted play action. Nobody home again. Still, he's going to air it down the middle, and it's intercepted. And it's Matt Elam. It was intercepted because McCray got to the quarterback. Laurenti McCray, who had the interception in the first quarter, forces an interception at this point in the game with a tough rush. A quick rush. Watch McCray in the stand up here, get to the quarterback, and force the bad throw. He beats the tight end, Rivera. Tyler Bray's not able to step all the way into that throw, and Elam is there for the interception. And again, he went for the play action. Had it been there, he might have had some extra protection, Mido. right? Mido. So a big play. Uh, 34 and a big one on the end of the play by 22 Elam. I thought it was interesting Dan Quinn when he described McCray to us said he's a heavy handed guy. Those were heavy hands <laughs> that hit the quarterback right there. Yeah they were. I'm not exactly sure what that means. <laughs> but he just hit the quarterback pretty hard. It's something like quiet feet. <laughs> Up the middle Gillis lays off to the races. Can they cut him off. He's got great speed cuts back against the grain. Johnson will track him down at the 25. But it's a pickup of 44. Most of the time tonight, Jeff Driscoll, when he's faked that, has kept the football. This time he leaves it with Gillisley. An excellent blocking at the point of attack by the inside lineman of Florida. Gillisley's biggest play of the night takes it all the way to the 25 yard line. First down, Gators trying to take the lead in this third quarter. Gillisley this time bottled up, only got a yard. Majet's there, so is McCullers, the nose tackle. And we're down to a minute in the third. Gillisley is hobbling off a little bit after that run. Remember, he came in with a groin injury, as Holly reported for you. Did participate in practice, but for the most part, the first half of practice each day this week for the Gators, and he's sort of favoring that area yeah, right now is. over there on the sideline. Matt Jones takes his place behind Driscoll. Dunbar in motion. Driscoll in trouble. Going to throw to the corner. Got him. Touchdown. Jordan Reed, what a throw. Under pressure. Is that quiet the crowd here except the Gator fans. Well Don Tavius Pimp is your Saf is the guy who gets the pressure number 41 and Majit. but Driscoll does a great job of just drifting away from it enough to buy time to make the throw and a beautiful throw it was. Sturgis with an important extra point up and good. Florida goes in front by a touchdown now. First, the interception by Elam. Well, we're watching this quarterback grow up, too. Aren't I mean, we? Just even the difference in his play tonight from last week in College Station when he played pretty efficiently. He's not just being efficient tonight. He's being a playmaker with his running and his throwing. So a big play by the defense, a big run by Gillisley. And then Driscoll to read for the touchdown. Florida's last three running plays have gained 126 yards, and then they got the big pass for the touchdown. Those are explosive plays. Sturgis to kick. And hits nine yards deep and bounces out to the back of the end zone. All right, Reese, we've still got 246, uh, 30 seconds rather, to go in the third quarter and another 15 to play after that as Rayshon Neal broke into the secondary eight yard pickup. He's run well tonight. He has you know in, in the first two games he had a little bit of a tendency to try to bounce everything outside. He was a wide receiver last year. They tried to convince him to run tougher between the tackles and he's done that tonight. He's got 89 yards on the ground. 
Ray fires outside. Oh, what a catch by Patterson. <laughs> I mean, you can't play it any better than Jalen Watkins did. Well, I, I think Jalen Watkins was holding the whole time, too. And yet it was a beautiful throw and a great catch on the sideline by Patterson. <laughs> Man. And the quarter does come to a close. It's going to be a dandy of a fourth quarter, though. The SEC on ESPN. And this is a beauty tonight at Neyland Stadium in Knoxville. The Gators on the road trying to make it eight straight over the Volunteers. They've got the lead, 27-20. Fifteen minutes remaining in regulation. Florida leading here in the fourth quarter by a touchdown. Marlon Lane in at tailback. Pump fake Gray going deep. Got a man. Oh, Patterson almost had it one-handed. That would have been sensational. It's a perfect place to throw this out over the outside shoulder, away from any safety help. I'm not sure why Patterson didn't put both hands up. He wasn't in a hand fight with the defender, but he only tried to reach with one, and he wasn't able to secure the catch. It was right on the money, or maybe just a little bit deep, but I know that Patterson thinks he should have had it. So second down and 10. Pressure coming. Bray goes the other way and throws it to one of the Florida coaches on the sideline. Sharif Floyd was putting the heat on Tyler Bray. Remember, both coaches, as we told you, said, I'm going to find out what our team is made of tonight. Will Muschamp right now found out his team could score two touchdowns yeah. in three minutes to take the lead on the road. Now we're going to get the answer from Derek Dooley's club. And remember, one of the reasons Florida was rotating those defensive linemen throughout the first half is to have fresh pass rushers in the fourth quarter expecting Tennessee to have to throw with Tyler Bray. Three wide outs for Bray on third down at 10. Fires complete to his tight end but he's short of the first down by about a yard and a half. See here's what I don't get. I don't get if you know you need 10 yards. Why nine yards on a route and catch the ball at nine yards. I mean just push it a little bit further past the first down marker and get the first down with the catch. So Tennessee's got to give it up. Deontay Saunders waiting back at the 10 yard line for Florida. They snap it and uh, he kicks the ball away soccer style rugby style rather left side and it goes out of bounds. I don't think he got what he wanted and the official comes up and marks it at the 17. I thought it might have been a little higher than that but that's wishful thinking and so the Gators get the ball with the lead and 14.05 to play in the fourth period here in Knoxville Florida 27 going to see 20 on the Gators IMG Sports Network. Tyler Bray played perhaps a perfect first half but a great tribute to the Gator defense. Tyler Bray came into this game fifth in the NCAA quarterback rating of 194. Tonight his quarterback rating is 115. Jeff Driscoll's quarterback rating is 149. Gators the lead in the ball. 11-27 to play in the fourth. Moving left to right. Drive starts at the 22-yard line. Driscoll in the pistol with Gillisley the running back. Dunbar wide right. They bring a man in motion. And they're going to hand the ball off, fake a handoff, and Driscoll keeps it. Runs off to his left and squirts out of bounds, getting up to the 28-yard line. That's a gain of six yards. Fake the jet sweep from left to right. Act like he was going to hand, hand off the ball to Gillisley going downhill and kept it himself. Ran around left end. It was designed. Pick up five. Pick up six. Total plays tonight, Florida 48. Tennessee 66. Tennessee has only one minute more though in terms of time of possession. Second and four Gators 28 yard line left hash. They bring a man in motion to Bose fake it to Bose direct snap to Burton and Burton will be hit and drop. Tennessee played that very well as they got their Jack linebacker on the outside Jacquez Smith to make the tackle on Burton that time. Yeah, Burton had no chance on that play. 
faked the jet sweep, looked inside, thought about bouncing to the backside. They were, they were all there. Now, are the Gators gonna make only one third down conversion tonight? They made one out of nine. And this one ain't easy. It's third and eight from the 24. Driscoll brings Dunbar in motion to the far side. There's twin receivers to the right side. Tennessee comes from the corner blitz. Driscoll looks to throw and fires to Hammond. His first catch at the 40. Frankie Hammond at the 50. Here he goes to the 40. He's 35. He's 30. He cuts inside the 25. He's on his feet to the 20. The 15. The 10. The 5. Touchdown! Touchdown! Touchdown, Gators! Frankie Hammond had a time in the end zone, and the Gators lead 33 to 20. Unbelievable. They came, they, Tennessee, came with a blip. It was either the corner or the strong safety. Frankie Hammond hooked up. Driscoll stood in there with, with the Tennessee defender bearing down right in his face, stepped and threw to Frankie Hammond, hit him right in the numbers. Driscoll got blasted. Frankie Hammond had daylight, ran down the field, looked like he was going to get run down, cut back one more time, I think got a got a block from Jordan Reed who can't no actually he just faked the guy out and cut back for a touchdown. <laughs> Great job by Frankie Hammond. Great job by Driscoll. Been some big plays by a bunch of guys tonight. Gracious. It's a career high passing yards for the youngster Driscoll. He's thrown for 219. Extra point is coming. Snap down. Kick up. And it is good. And the silence is golden. Timeout in Tennessee. Florida 34, Tennessee 20 on the Gators IMG Sports Network. The Gators drove 78 yards, three plays, got 75 of them on the Driscoll to Hammond connection. The Gators have scored 21 unanswered points, and Florida has its largest lead of the game, 34 to 20, with 9.55 to play in the fourth quarter. All right, here's the kick up, and it's a ball that's going to travel back in the end zone and be another touchback. Hunter wide right. They got twin receivers to the left. Rodgers in the slot left. Patterson wide to the left. They're going to run the ball, and the Gators, Antonio Morrison got up there and made a stop right at the line of scrimmage for no gain on Rajon Neal. Morrison, I think, has had a really good game. Standing in there, making that hit. Terrific. I like the play call. I like them running that ball. The clock continues to run. Yeah, well, they're trying to keep this pass rush honest because Bray's been getting a little bit beat up late in this game. Rogers slot right. Hunter wide right. Patterson wide left to the bounce. Snap to Bray. Play action, looking to throw. Fires a deep ball wide right. Don't worry about it. He's overthrown way out of bounds. Incomplete. And he got hit when he threw that ball. Yep. He just keeps getting bounced around, wearing on him. Eventually can affect the quarterback's accuracy if he gets hit a bunch of times. Receivers, Hunter really, I said that earlier, right after I said it, he made a catch, but he just seems a little bit lethargic. I don't know what's going on with him, but it's good for the Gators. Talking about the Tennessee wide receiver. Third and 10 for Tennessee. Three receivers right, one to the left. Snap to Bray, stepping up under some pressure. He throws, and it's going to be incomplete. And the Gators were blanketing the receiver. And they also had pressure all over Bray. He had to unload it quickly. And it's now fourth and ten for Tennessee. Dominic Easley hanging on Bray when he tried to make the throw. Obviously not easy to be accurate. Coming from behind, beat his man on the rush. Good coverage underneath. Another brilliant defensive series. This defense in the second half of these games is amazing. Well, last week at Texas A&M, the Aggies, they had uh, no points on their final seven possessions. Here's the Tennessee punt. Left foot kicks it away, hits it the 42, inside the 35, inside the 30, and still rolling down to the 25-yard line. We have seen this year a boatload of average at best punts that have picked up 20 yards on the ground. That goes for a total of 50 yards. Yep. Driscoll under center. 
Hands it off to Gillisley, running off to the left side. He gets to 30. He's 35-40. Gillisley at midfield across Tennessee territory. And he gets down to the 40-yard line on another beautiful run down at the 42. And that goes for a total of 33 more yards before the safety Brent Brewer made the tackle. Yeah, man coverage in the secondary. Nobody home once he broke through the line of scrimmage in that diamond formation. They found, he found a crease. His offensive line created outside the left tackle and Gillisley hit it full speed. And when he hit the secondary, there was nobody home. And it's way down the field. And Mike Gillisley, who came into this game leading the league in rushing at 115 yards a game. He's gone for 113 tonight with a bum groin. I love it. First and 10, 42-yard line. Another handoff to Gillisley, and he'll be hit and dropped at the line of scrimmage this time by the Tennessee defenders. The clay clock will, or the game clock, will run and get down toward eight minutes. Meanwhile, on that great run by Frankie Hammond, which we talked about Brian Randolph, the safety being hurt. He is on crutches on the Tennessee sideline, the safety who just couldn't keep up with Frankie Hammond. Looks like he's got a wrap on his right knee. Under eight minutes to play in the game. The Gators with the ball and the lead. Florida 34, Tennessee 20. Mac Brown goes in the game now at a running back, giving a breather for Gillisley. Driscoll in the pistol, takes the snap, hands it off to Mac Brown, running straight ahead and turns his back to the defenders and tries to run backward and get inside the 40 to the 39, pick up three yards. Good hard running by Mac Brown. I, I felt like, from my point of view, watching him run in these first three games, when he gets a chance, he runs hard. Took the ball up the middle, bent it back to the left a little bit, twisted, two hands on the ball, picked up about three yards. The Gators have averaged 9.9 .9 yards per play tonight. 7-11 left. Florida 34, Tennessee 20. Gators with a third and seven. Driscoll hands the ball off, and here's a jet sweep coming to the right side for Patton. 35-yard line, and knocked out of bounds right near the stake, and the official spots it short. Of course. At the 32-yard line, he stuck his foot in the ground about six inches short. Good-looking play. Jet sweep from left to right. Coming to Solomon Patton. They may, be, they may be going to measure, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's that close. And they're going to bring in Sturgis. The kick about a 50-yard field goal, just inside 50 yards, right hash. Gators lead by 14 with 6.53 to play in the game. Sturgis has hit twice tonight. Good snap, good set down, kick is on the way, and it is going to be good! Oh my! He's just under 50 yards, and the Gators have a 17-point lead. I thought, the, I thought that was the right decision by the coaches, and that is huge. A 17-point lead with 6 minutes and 44 seconds, Gators game. Sturgis with a long run up, striking the ball. He's got to be juiced. He hits it deep, and it will be back out of bounds, crossing the goal line, and a beautiful kick. It'll be out to the 25-yard line. Bray in the gun, takes the snap, drops back, looks, looks, now steps up, throws short, and it's going to be incomplete and almost picked off by Luchez Purifoy at the 33-yard line. And Bray now seems really disheveled about what's going on. Coverage is still tight. Receivers seem worn down. Pressure is getting more and more. There's the snap to Bray, and a handoff to Neal, and Neal's hit and dropped at the 17-yard line as the Gators' Laurenti McCray got in there and made a stop, and the Boo Birds are still in the stands. Just coming from everywhere. Gators are putting Putting pressure on them, crashing their running game. Really no sense of urgency out of this offense. Not at all. It's as if Tennessee said, we gave you our best shot, and you took it and smashed us right back. Yep. Here's the snap to Bray. Bray stepping up, looking, looking, throws the ball. Left side, out of bounds. Caught by Derek Dooley on the sideline. He's not an eligible receiver. And so they send the punter out. And oh, these are sweet. Five minutes and 55 seconds. 
Dubose in to return the punt from Dar. He's scheduled to hit it at the five yard line. Fourth and 18, 555 left. Gators 37, Volunteers 20. There's the snap. Dar, right leg strikes the ball. Fair catch signal and caught at the 40 yard line by DuBose after a 43 yard Tennessee punt. Third down eight, 42 yard line. Gators hand the ball off. Here's Patton again in the round near side, 45 50. He's got a first down crossing midfield out of bounds at the Tennessee 43. Make that 44 yard line. Well, Pat Solomon Patton has become the sweep guy, basically. Coming in motion, taking the ball, going on around the right side. If you could have seen it, he tried so hard to stay in bounds, couldn't quite do it. Realizing if he could stay in bounds, it would keep the clock running. So he was conscious of it, but he had, he used all the feel to run the sweep. 3.55 and counting. Detroit Pittman, youngster, out wide left as the receiver. And the Gators have another youngster, Rafael Andradas, in the game as a wide receiver to the right. But they're going to run the ball, hand it off to Matt Jones, and Jones trying to go to his left. We got cut down at around the 45-yard line. Well, you know, before the game, when the Gators huddled right there after the uh, warm-ups on the field, it was Laurenti McRae in the center of the circle. And uh, I watched him animated. He was the leader, and I thought, that was a, looks a lot like Lawrence Wright down there leading those charges. <laughs> and Laurenti McRae had a big day, but so did many other Gators individually today. Oh, we'll have Huge to go games. through them. It was. Yes. It, 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 this was a team win as much as I've ever seen one. So many guys contributed. Well, it's a, a typical Will Muschamp win. The Gators simply refused to bend and break, and they ground it out. That biggest hug was for his offensive line coach, Tim Davis. I'll tell you what, that, that this offensive line has been impressive. Tim Davis was the offensive line coach at USC during a couple national championship teams, and uh, they were knocking them around tonight. Totten Holly and I'll see you next week from the Plains as Auburn hosts LSU. This one's over. Two guys that worked together under Nick Saban, a shake and a hug. But the good news for the Florida fans, they are 3 and 0, oh, and they'll probably move up in the national rankings. They came in number 18. They go home a 17 point winner over Tennessee. Thanks for watching ESPN, home of the Discover BCS National Championship game. Ole Miss in Texas is next. Mark Jones, Brock Heward standing by. Brad Nessler, so long from Neyland Stadium.